majority of the topics in this session, I believe, are from the radiculopathy uh, domain. Okay, so uh, for to keep it brief, I'll focus more on the lumbar spine. These are the headings uh, through which I'll take you. So if we consider the functional uh, unit of the spine, uh, it has two vertebrae, the intervening disc, uh, facet joint, and the ligament supporting them. And we, as orthopedic surgeons, uh, usually tend to give these blocks under uh, C-arm. So this is how the spine will look, the pedicles, uh, transverse process, and spinous process. And to correlate with the, uh, the neural structures with the spine, so the dura will lie medial to the medial pedicular line, and the exiting nerve will pass hugging the pedicle. And uh, uh, there might be facetal pain uh, in some patients, so facet is supplied by the medial branch of the dorsal ramus of the spinal nerve. And, uh, one facet is supplied by the uh, spinal nerve of the uh, same level and the nerve above. Disc is uh, what we consider is uh, usually a vascular and a neural structure, but outer third of the disc is supplied by the sinovertebral nerve. So uh, going to the pathophysiology, uh, uh, Professor uh, Mixter and Barr were, uh, were the first to describe the disc herniation uh, as the cause of the pain, uh, that is low back pain and the radicular pain. Uh, as we all know, uh, the types of the disc herniation are uh, bulging, uh, protrusion, uh, extrusion, and uh, sequestration. And it is now uh, well established that it is the radicular pain and back pain is not just due to the uh, mechanical compression, but also due to the chemical irritation of the nerve wood. Uh, when we, we uh, see the patient with uh, low back pain and uh, uh, radicular pain, we have to make a uh, thorough examination uh, following the orthopedic principles, look, feel, move. And we should pinpoint a particular nerve root if possible in those cases. And uh, uh, we investigate with x-rays and MRIs in these cases and try to correlate the symptoms uh, with the uh, radiology. Initial treatment, we, you know, we might not directly jump to the blocks. Uh, we might ask patient to take uh, NSAIDs and physiotherapy and some rest. But if it doesn't uh, help, then we might offer an injection. So these injections were popularized by Dr. McNabb. And principle behind these injections is, as I already told you, there is uh, inflammation of the nerve due to chemical irritation. And we try to take away this uh, irritation with a steroid injection or maybe some other drugs. So usually the uh, drug which is injected is uh, Depomedrol and Triamisinolone. But the problem uh, with these drugs is these are particulate drugs. So uh, if uh, they are, these are injected into the artery or uh, dura, there might be some problems. And it is usually mixed with local anesthetics. And the newer thing is PRP. So before we know uh, what to do, we should know what not to do. So contraindications are called Aitkwana syndrome, if there is a progressive neurological uh, deficit, if there is an infection, spondylodiscitis, local uh, injection site infection, infection, patient is uncontrolled diabetic and uh, established uh, bleeding disorders if he has. And we can, uh, if these things are not there, we can give uh, injections with, uh, in the patients with uh, uh, low back pain and radicular pain. So uh, there are different types of injections, uh, uh, epidural, uh, uh, selective blocks, intradiscal, facetal, and medial nerve block, uh, medial, medial branch blocks. If the patient is having uh, uh, paraspinal pain, and which increases on uh, extension and uh, rotation, uh, this, this might be pathology of the facet joint. So we might uh, address, with, uh, address it with uh, facetal block or medial branch block. Uh, caudal and uh, uh, epidural blocks are uh, described, but uh, these are uh, little non-specific because the uh, drug reaching the proper inflamed root uh, is very less. So selective blocks are uh, preferred, which are which are more specific. We can target a particular nerve. We can give it through interlaminar approach or or a transforaminal approach. 
Uh, while giving it in a transformational approach, uh, we start uh, paramedian, uh, almost uh, around 8 to 10 centimeters uh, lateral to the midline, and uh, uh, insert the spinal needle uh, uh, and reach uh, the posterior aspect of uh, medial pedicular line and in lateral posterior aspect of the uh, posterior vertebral line. And that is the foramen. Uh, intradiscal blocks, uh, as we all know, disc uh, starts degenerating from inside. So it is the source of the inflammation. So we might as well uh, inject drug directly into the disc. And uh, if uh, there is a rent in the disc, the drug will uh, come out of the rent and it will uh, go to the inflamed nerve. And it might help even in the bilateral radiculopathies. As you can see in this uh, case, the drug is coming out from the disc and it is uh, going along the nerve. So uh, if you see the results of uh, these blocks, so the study says that around 40 per, uh, around 20 percent of the patients will have relief uh, till four months. And uh, it is uh, clinically effective and uh, if you compare it with uh, microdisectomy, it is very cost effective. Oh, there are some complications involved with these injections. We might introduce some infection. There might be uh, nerve injury. There are incidences of hematoma occurring after these uh, injections. Allergic reaction to the local anesthetic might occur, and there might be dural puncture. So uh, take-home message will be uh, these blocks uh, give very good pain relief, and uh, effect might not be very long-lasting. But uh, we can use the period of relief for good physio and rehabilitation. These are my references. Thank you.